Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 701. And today, well, I've got a little bit of an update for you and a little bit of a fishing story, a bass fishing story. And uh, well, I'm going to share that with you, but I'm also going to give you an update on someone that I had on the podcast back on episode 576. And it really was about how Louie, that's his first name, how he went and uh, figured out that, uh, well, the fishing market was something he wanted to get into because he had a friend of his that owned a tackle shop, which I've talked a lot about this in the past, is if you have someone that you know that is in a business, you might not be the expert, but they are, but you've got expertise in you know digital marketing or building websites or whatever, and that's kind of what happened to Louie. And I had him on the podcast, and since then, uh, some things have happened. Uh, number one, I caught a very, very large mouth bass, and I'll tell you all the details there in a minute. And I used one of Louie's jigs, one of the bass jigs that they sell, uh, but... After I went through and uh, started to dive into this market because I was seriously trying to figure out how to use the jig and I was looking for more information and I said, uh, well, let me go over to uh, Bico is the name of the of the brand. Let me go see if they got some help for me. And uh, well, since I talked to Louie, they've done some stuff, but it seems like they might have dropped the ball and kind of got busy with just day-to-day stuff. So I want to kind of come back on, revisit what we talked about, and then again, talk about what I think they should be doing moving forward. And this is going to help anyone that might be in a situation like this, that's thinking about building out a brand with content, with, uh, you know, with resources, but then also how to lead people back into your business and your brand on a regular basis, um, how to have third party testimonials, like all of that stuff I'm going to be talking about here on this episode. Now, Before we do jump into this episode, which is episode 701, it's just kind of crazy to even say that number, but if you want the show notes, you can head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash 701. I will include a picture, which I already posted on Instagram, but uh, I will post that picture of myself uh, with the fish that I caught, and it's pretty big, actually. I didn't have a scale to weigh it, but it had to be at least four or five pounds. But again, I'll talk all about that here in a minute. So uh, theamazingseller.com forward slash 701, and you can grab the show notes, the transcripts, links, and uh, also you can see that picture that I posted there. All right, now, the other thing I wanna remind you is depending on when you're listening to this, if you are not yet attending Brand Accelerator Live, well, here is your friendly reminder that you should probably go over and grab your ticket or you should at least go over and see if tickets are still available because as we get closer, and again, depending on when you're listening to this, I know that tickets will be limited if not gone. So please, if you are at all interested in learning how to build your brand out, very similar to what we're going to be talking about today, but really going deep into these certain areas of building a brand and building out your business so you can scale it, so you can grow it, and really create a future-proof brand, well, you're going to want to attend Brand Accelerator Live. So head over, grab your ticket, brandaccelerator.live.com. All the information is over there. All of the sessions, or at least most of the sessions, are probably up now, so you can see exactly what we're going to be going over as far as what the speakers and the experts are going to be sharing. And uh, yeah, I am totally fired up about Brand Accelerator Live, so would love to see you there. All right, so with that all being said... Let's talk a little bit about that uh, that bass that I caught, all right? So here's what happened. My daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, she's 24 now. Yes, 24. I can't believe I'm even saying that. And her husband, wait a minute, did I just say that? Her husband? Yes, she's married, uh, which is insane. And uh, yeah, and so they were going to visit for the weekend. Um, he is in the Navy. He uh, was deployed for a while, and then he got home, and we said, you know what? We should have you come up for the weekend. We'll spend some time and just chill by the pool, do a little fishing. I haven't done any fishing in years. Uh, I think I, the last time I went was, well, I did throw the line in here. We have a pond out at the back of our house on a golf course. Um, it's a pretty large pond, too, uh, and we also uh, we have access to Lake uh, Norman now, which is in North Carolina. I'm in South Carolina, but, uh, but yeah, I haven't thrown the line in, in a very, very long time. Okay. So since the last episode, well, Louie sent me, I think it was like five different types of jigs that they make over at Bico. Um, so 
I had them in my drawer for the longest time and my son-in-law was here and I started to dig out the poles and I said, you know what? We got to test out these, these jigs here. We've got a pond, which I know there's, there's largemouth bass in there. I've seen people go in there and catch them. Um, and I've heard they're actually large in there, like really large, like up to 10, 12 pounders. Um, so I said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get our, our poles ready and let's go down. So that's what we did. We walked on down and I put on a new jig from Biko and, uh, well, I think it was five casts. Bang. I got a hit. And I'm like, holy crap. Like this, I, I got something right now. It wasn't massive, but I could feel it. You know, I haven't, again, I haven't reeled a fish in, in a long time. You know, I hooked him good, brought him in. And, uh, it was probably about a two pounder. It wasn't that big, maybe a pound and a half. It wasn't that big, but it was a fish five casts, right? So I was like, holy crap, this thing works. Like Pico, you know, they make some really great, uh, you know, bass jigs. You know, this is great. And they're weedless and all that. So I'm like, okay, let's keep going here, right? So I keep casting, I keep casting. And probably about 30, maybe 40 minutes in, all of a sudden, I felt my line being pulled. And I'm like, wait a minute, it, it didn't really, you know, I didn't really feel like a tug. I just felt it take it. And I'm like, oh, am I, am I caught? You know, it kind of felt like I was caught. And then all of a sudden I start bringing in my, you can hear the drag on, you know, it was kind of like squealing and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's slipping. So then I try to, I'm still trying to reel that thing in the, the poles being bent over. I'm slowing up. And then all of a sudden I said, you know what? I'm going to just let it take it. I'm going to let it get tired. So I did. And I'm like, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to bring this thing in without the line snapping. So I'm still reeling in Then I'd let it get tired. I'm reeling in and that thing is going, going all the way right. And then it's going all the way left. And then I yelled over to my son-in-law, his name's Cameron. I go, Cameron, come on over here. Come on over here. I think I got a big one, a big one. It's either that or I'm pulling in a a turtle or something that's got a lot of energy, which I don't think it was, but uh, I was just kind of kidding. But anyway, so I'm reeling it in, reeling it in, finally get it close to shore. Didn't have a net, didn't even have a net. And we pulled that thing in and it was a monster monster. And, uh, I was pumped. I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. That thing's massive. And he's like, I don't think I've ever seen a bass that big. I'm like me neither. I don't have a scale, but that thing's gotta be four, maybe five pounds. So we picked it up, took a couple pictures and, uh, yeah, so that was my fish. But then we went back out, didn't catch another one the rest of the day, but caught two of them in the first two hours. And that second one, that was, uh, that was just the best thing ever to be able to catch something that size. So I'm a fan of these jigs now, right? I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I shot a picture. I posted it on Instagram. I tagged Biko um, on it and just so that way there they can have it, right? So now I'm excited. I want to do more bass fishing, okay? I want to start learning a little bit more about it. So I wanted to go over and learn from Biko. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go over there. I know the story because I had uh, Louie on the podcast. He told me all about his friend that is the expert that owns a tackle shop. And he's the one that created these about 20, 25 years ago. And he's modified them and all this. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go there and have them show me how I should be actually casting, how I should be, you know, letting the, the, the uh, jig kind of sink and then come up. Like I'm looking for like, how do I actually do Am I doing it right? Like all I did was cast it, let it drop pulled it a little bit and then reeled it in, drop. Uh, am I doing it right? I have no idea, right? So I start looking up uh, their website. I find their website and they got a little button at the bottom and it says, join the newsletter. So I'm like, now I'm curious. I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and see what happens here if I join. So I joined and uh, actually I'm going to pull up the page right here because I want to go through some of this stuff with you guys. So I went to the page and it says, join our email list, performance jigs to receive updates and specials, Right at the bottom of the website, which by the way, anyone listening and Louie, uh, this should be at the top. This should be front and center. Okay. And here's the other thing. It should be more enticing than join our email list. Okay. To receive updates and specials. Now here's what happened when I put my, when I put my name in there, not even my name, I put my email in there. There's no name field. It's just an email field. I put my name in there and I hit submit and it says the form was sent successfully. That's it. Okay. So I got it. All right. Great. Now, the first thing that you should do, anyone that's doing this, at least send them to a thank you page that then says, Hey, you you, you sell products. So maybe it's like, Hey, if you want 20% off one of our jigs, use this code or use this special link or whatever, right? Like something like that. Like I, me personally, I I want, I'm going to buy more jigs. Number one, 
I want them, I like them, but I want to learn more about how to use them, right? So I'm going to buy more jigs. So I went here, I submitted that, I got nothing. Now, don't you think that you have a better chance of selling me something off of your site because I'm there and really the site is all about, it's the store. It's not even really a lot about, you know, really about like how to fish. Nothing really that I see on the front page. And the, and the join our email list is way down at the bottom. So here's a little tip for anyone. This way here, you don't have to worry about going out there and figuring out how do you code up your website to put a, a thing at the top or how do you put a, you know, maybe a, a, they call it a pop-in or a slide-in or any of that stuff. Just go to Hello Bar, okay? Hello Bar will allow you to be able to do this. So this way here, all you got to do is tell Hello Bar you want to install this thing on your website. It'll give you some very basic instructions and then you basically just install it. Super easy. Okay. And then you can have it at the very top. You can have a little slide in that says, uh, let's see, uh, your first time coming there, you'll see it after that for 30 days, you won't see it again. So this way here, you're not annoying your visitors and stuff, right? But you need to put something like that on your website. I don't care if you get 10 people come in there a day or a thousand people come in there a day. That's a must. So again, I'm looking at Bico jigs. That's what I would recommend for them and anyone else that's in this situation. Not buried down at the bottom. I got to scroll all the way to the bottom to see that, right? And I also think it should be something like receive 20% off your first order. Receive 25% off your, your first order. Receive a free jig. Something, right? Give, give them something. Give them a reason why um, they want to. And I mean, a perfect example of this is like my, um, or is it uh, my mystery tackle box or mystery tackle box, whatever that one is. It's a monthly subscription, like that's a great one to model as far as like how they're doing marketing and content marketing and third party testimonials and all of that stuff. But anyway, that's what I would say here. I mean, the site looks great. I mean, it's clean, but you need, you definitely need that, uh, that email opt in up there. Okay. So that was first thing that I noticed. Okay. So we got to fix that. So if Louie is listening to this, which I'm sure he's going to, um, got to fix that. Okay. We got it. We got it. You can still keep it at the bottom if you want, but when they submit it, you got to have it come up to a thank you page that gives them, um, gives them a special discount or a reason to do something else. Right. Those people are, are really, um, they're, they're really active and they want to probably buy something or they want to learn how to catch more bass like I do. Right. You could even come up with something like, uh, enter your name and email address to receive the five tips to catch more bass, um, in, uh, or on your next, uh, you know, outing or in your next tournament or something like that. Right. So you just want to come up with something there and I'm sure that you can come up with something that is going to help people catch more bass. All right. So now going back to my little bit of frustration. Okay. Now I'm all excited. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to Bico and I'm going to learn from these guys how to catch more bass. Right. I want them to show me as a beginner, what do I need to know about yours and others? Why, why do I want to use yours? But then also give me some tips that I need to know. How do I cast it? I noticed, uh, the, uh, the the gentleman, I believe it, I believe his name is Joe. Uh, let me see here. No, it's Bill. I'm sorry, Bill. So Bill showed on a video that he was in, you know, casting in the weeds. He's like, you got to go in the weeds. You got to go, uh, you know, you got to go where dead limbs are and all of that stuff. Cause that's where the bass are. That's where they are. Right. But, and, and he's casting like a way that I've never really casted before. So I have no idea what rod he's using, what reel he's using, how he's flinging that thing out there with his hand and not really flicking it like you normally would. Like I'm thinking to myself, Bill, I need you to show me how to do that. Like you're just showing me like, yeah, it's just, it's natural. Like I, I'm just going to go out there and be able to do it. I've never done it that way before. So I'm a newbie. You gotta, you gotta cater to the newbies and you can then cater towards the novice, right? Or the, the, uh, you know, the advanced fisherman. Okay. So I would love to see a whole beginner series from start, like what you need to know to get started, how to cast in the weeds, what's the proper equipment. Now, here's the other thing. Why not be an affiliate for other poles and reels and, you know, different lines and all of that stuff that you don't sell right now? Why not be an affiliate for that? And then you can have an additional revenue stream coming in from that. All right. So that was another observation. All right. But one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest things that I seen that I need is I need more how to content. I need more of that. And I know, Louie, you are sitting on a gold mine because 
you have an expert. You might even be somewhat of that expert, but you've got Bill, right? So how hard would it be to have Bill, whether it's answer questions or just give the weekly fishing tip or hit what happened when he went fishing or what one of his customers said when they came in the store and just record that video. It could be three minutes long. It doesn't have to be that long and do one video every single week. The other thing I see that's missing here is we need how to content. So I'm going to go on here now and I look at the menu. It says home store news, tips, photos, pro staff, FAQ about contact. So I'm going to go to tips and let me see what pops up. And I'm doing this on the fly here, guys. So I have no idea. Tips and techniques. Okay. So we've got articles. We've got Bill's Q, uh, Q's questions, top five bass jigging, jigging tips, frequently asked questions, Bill's jig fishing tackle suggestions. All right. So I'm going to click on one of those articles and I'm going to see what pops up. And we have jig fishing for bass, top five tips. Okay. The right equipment. Okay. There it is. Approaching targets, uh, casting accuracy, uh, maintaining connection, vertical presentation, and that's it. Okay. Which is great. Why isn't that a video? Like, why isn't all of that right there a video? That needs to be a video. I'm not much of a reader, so I want that video. Okay. So really all I'm seeing on this, on this website is I'm seeing three different articles. That's all I'm seeing. Okay. So let me go to another one here. Frequently asked questions. Let's see what that is. And as I'm doing this, I get a, do you recommend trimming the weed guard on a jig? Do you recommend trimming the skirt on a jig? What is the best color jig for bass? Why are your jigs made lead free? What states are lead um, jigs illegal in? Why owner hooks only? Uh, what is the best line for jigs? What brand? So all of these could be one, little videos. What kind of rod do you use for bass jigs? Hey guys, Bill here. I just wanted to jump in here real quick and I wanted to let you guys know, I get this question a lot. What kind of rod do you use for using or when you're using bass jigs? That's the question I want to answer for you here today. Hey, before you do anything else right now though, make sure you go ahead and you hit that subscribe button. This way here, you'll never miss any of these bass fishing tips in the future. All right. So let me talk about the bass fishing rod that I like to use and why. There you go, right? What are the best jig trailers? Hey guys, Bill here once again, and I wanted to dive into another question that I get a lot, and that is, what are the best jig trailers, right? Like, I get people that ask me all the time, what do you use? What do you recommend? That's what I'm going to answer in this, in this video. And oh, by the way, before I do that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. This way you never miss any more or any of the upcoming bass fishing tips that I'm going to give to you guys, okay? So make sure you subscribe. All right, so what are the best jig trailers? Great question. Here's my answer. Boom, done. Like, guys, I got a whole bunch of more questions. What is the best knot for a jig? Do you use scents on your jigs? What is the best time of year to use a jig? Right? All of these are video. Con so, Louie, if you're listening right now, right, get Bill to answer all of these on video in maybe two minutes, three minutes. That's it. Okay? And then you're going to post them up to your channel. Now, I looked at the YouTube channel. YouTube channel looks like it has four videos, I believe. Maybe four videos. I think the last one was like eight months ago. So I'm going to go over there real quick while you guys are here and, and we're doing this live. I know you guys can't see it, but you can, I'll try to give you guys the play by play. So I'm at this YouTube channel. Okay. The image is great on top. It just shows all of the, all of the, uh, the uh, rigs or the jigs, I should say. And then we have, um, 147 subscribers. And then we have eight months ago, the original Biko jig broken down by Bill Q 2000 views. That's great. Punching vegetation for reaction bites with the Biko. 3.5 thousand. Okay. So 3,500 and then Q and a, should I trim the weed bar weed guard on my jig? 596. That was nine months ago. Then two years ago, we've got underwater action. That's got 20,000 views. Okay. 20,000 views. Now that's really cool too, by the way, because honestly, like I want to see what that jig does and how it works in the water. Right? So if you can do more of that, this has got 48 likes on it, 20, 20,000 views. And I mean, Come on. I mean, this is, this is awesome. 20,000 views on a channel that only has 147. So 147 subscribers. So this makes you say, if I did more of the underwater action type stuff and then tips, I could probably widen out that net of uh, literally like widen out the net and get more people that are interested in this stuff. All right. The other little suggestion I would have, and this goes for anyone. There's not much of a description here. It just says working the bottom with a black and blue Biko jig showcasing the jig stand up design and how it performs underwater. That's it. That's the only thing it has. Okay. Now here's the good news. 
You don't have to have a lot of subscribers for a video to get 20,000 views, okay? Because this only has 147 subscribers, okay? Now, here's the other thing. The very first thing that you want to put in here, and Louie, you can do this right now. Go over to your channel, go into this video, retitle that, okay? So it's it's keyword loaded better, okay? This doesn't really give you much. Like, um, you know, uh, seeing the underwater action of a bass fishing jig, something like that, right? You want bass fishing in there if you can, all right? But the other thing is, is in the very first line in your description, you want that to be the link to go buy one of these jigs, okay? So um, the jig we, uh, the jigs that we're using in this video can be found at http colon forward slash uh, forward slash, and then it would be whatever it is, bicojigs.com, and then the link to, you know, the... Um, the extension to the actual page, like that's it. Okay. I mean, you've got people that are coming to this video probably still right now that if they see that they're going to click on it because they want to see, or they want to buy one of these jigs after they've seen what it can do underwater. All right. And so what I would do is I would also shoot a video, uh, with all of the people that have caught fish with the jigs. So I would have uh, bill come on and I'd have him talk about the jigs and how to use them. Right. And then I would, sh- I would flash uh, testimonials of people that have caught the fish or videos. I'd also get people to submit their videos of them fi- or, uh, catching the fish or them after they caught the fish and they're holding it up and going, yeah, I want to give Bill a shout out. I caught this on the Bico. Thanks so much, man. This is awesome. Like you get something like that. It's third party testimonials. Like you want those. All right. I mean, you guys can tell I get fired up about this because we're sitting on a gold mine right here right? And I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with the content side of things, but I just literally flew through a few different ways that you can be adding content in this market, in this niche right now, okay? Now, the other thing is I went over to the Facebook page. The Facebook page is doing really good. I mean, as far as like people are posting stuff. Four hours ago, it says pro staff member John, um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Meteoros, uh, with a solid fish on the Biko bomb, right? And it's got 25 likes, but it was four hours ago, right? Four hours ago, okay? And it's a picture of the uh, of the bass with the lure, or the, not the lure, the, uh, the jig inside of the bass um, as he caught him. And then it's of, uh, it looks like John holding it, okay? And then we got another one. It was 16 hours ago. Kevin Roberts with a new... Um, Let's see, uh, six pound, 10 ounce on the original black and blue Biko jig. Way to go, Kevin, right? So, and 65 likes on that one. It's just awesome, right? And then it looks like got some, uh, some really good uh, reviews on the page. Uh, so here's what I would be doing. Here's another one too, July 13th. So as the time that I'm recording, this is the 16th, so it's three days ago. Uh, Craig Lehman with a nice chunk on the original Biko. Another big old bass. Another one, uh, about a week after that. BBS Joe with a nice five five eleven on the original Biko jig. Nice one, Joe. Right? So you could hop on a video and go, hey guys, just wanted to jump in here. We've had like four people email me and post on the Biko Facebook page. They've caught some massive bass. They're catching it on this one. And the way that they're catching it is they're going deep in the weeds. And the way that you go deep in the weeds is with these specially uh, created Biko jigs, right? Like that's what you're going to do. And then you give some tips and then you highlight these people. Now here's the deal. A lot of people want to know, what do I post to my email list? What do I send them? You send them this stuff. You, you do what I just said. You create some of those short little mini videos. And then you say, Hey guys, just, you know, giving you an update this week. We've had a lot of people that have su- submitted their photos. I've got them posted over on the Facebook page. You can go here and check them out, or you can go over and check out this new video that I just shot and that's how they've caught them is by using this jig. And I'm going to give you a demonstration as far as what jig they're using and, and how they're using it effectively. Go check it out, right? So this way here, you're building the email list. And from the email list, we're driving those people over to the content. And we're also showing them that other people are catching fish. Now, here's the deal. If I seen that email and I read it, I'd be like, oh man, I want to go out and drop the line in this afternoon. Like I want to go, right? Like I, I want to go. It's getting me excited just thinking about it. I want to go out there and do it right? I want to go out there and fish, right? So that's what you're doing, okay? And no matter what market you're in, okay, you can still do this to certain to some certain extent because some people say, well, mine's not a hobby, 
right? Mine's, uh, you know, a different type of market that I can't be showing up. You can always be showing up with content and value. And then if there's something that they're struggling with and you can show that other people are getting a solution or they're into Legos and they're building these amazing Lego, uh, you know, you know, designs and these structures, right? Like if you're into that, well, you're going to want to see that, right? Or let's say that you are, uh, let's say that you're into creating the best lawn in your neighborhood, right? And, and so what, so what that, uh, you know, what, what you're going to be supplying is all these tips on how to keep grubs off your, uh, you know, out of your lawn, how to keep your lawn, uh, properly, uh, you know, watered, uh, you know, what type of irrigation system you should use, how often should you mow, how high should you mow? Like all of these things, if you're into that, you know, you're going to want to open up that email. So, just got to think a little bit more creatively about your market and how you can then reach them. But I just wanted to share this with you because after I was going through this, I'm like, man, I want to learn from Bill. I want to learn from Louie. I want you to show me every single thing. Like if we're in the boat together, I want you to be like, Hey, here's what we're going to do. Step one, this step two, this step three, this. And now if you're cat, how many times should I try a jig before I give up on it and try something else? How often should I do 20 casts? Should I do 500 casts? Like how many casts should I do? That's, that would be a question I'd be asking. Like Bill, you know, I've tried this thing. We've went around, we've combed it. Would you, would you give up on it? Would you try something else? Uh, It's different. It's different light, right? Today's cloudy versus sunny. Uh, What one would you use in that, in that type? What what about colors? What about if the, if the pond is cloudy? What if uh, you're in a lake? Like there's all these different things that I'm going to have questions about that. I didn't find the answer. I got to go on YouTube and find them from other people without using your jigs. So you see what I'm saying? Like I'm buying into bill. I'm buying into Louie, right? I want to go in and I want to find out the answer from Biko. Now here's the thing. Some people say, well, Scott, if, uh, if I'm not the face, how do I do this? Well, you could have people in your community. I guarantee if I reached out to this guy right here, I'm reading this right here. The guy's name is uh, Joe, right? BBS Joe, right? So if I reached out to him, he looks like he likes to fish. He's got a big old bass right there, five pound, 11 ounces, caught it on the original Biko. If I said to him, hey man, could you shoot a quick video this week of some tips that you've learned over the years? And I'd love to feature you on Biko Jigs. Would you do that? Oh yeah, man. Just take your phone. Fire it up. Maybe you know, use a tripod or have someone else film you. We'd love to feature some of our Biko, uh, you know, family. Right? That's it. And now that can be a contributor for your business. And they don't mind it. They like it. They enjoy it. Okay. So I think I've made my point uh, pretty well clear here. Right? Like you have to go out there and really understand that if you're building a brand, we need to get attention. And these are some different ways that you get attention. But If you are just focusing on how do I get sales on Shopify, how do I get sales on Amazon, that is going to be just a one, a one way direction, right? Like that's it. That's all you're trying to do. If you do the other stuff, we're going to be able to get other people to help promote us, but also talk about us. Okay. Talk about the business. Talk about the brand. Talk about the thing that they actually want to do. I know myself, if I go out there right now, I'm going to catch another five pounder. That's what I want to do, right? So if other people are doing that and I see it, I want to do the same thing, right? So you got to stay front of mind. And the way that you do that is by delivering content, helpful content, but then also just stuff that's happening now. What's current right now? What, you know, we're, we're approaching the, you know, the hottest part of the summer right now. Is the, is this jig the same that I would use in the fall? You know, a different color? Like, I don't know. I need to know that. All right. So hopefully this has helped everyone that's listening as I kind of go through this. And really I am kind of picking it apart because if I'm, if I'm with you guys, if I'm with Louie, if I'm with you, Bill, we got to do this stuff. You have to do this stuff in my opinion, because you're, you're losing out on a massive opportunity to get yourself out there in front of more people. And also you're going to turn up the knob with other, other ways to monetize, not just selling the jigs right? Like getting traffic to your blog. Well, yes, it will get you more sales on your Biko jigs over on Amazon or on your Shopify. It will do that, but it's also going to allow you to tell people what other rods they should buy, what other reels, what other fishing nets, 
what type of tackle box, all of that stuff. And then you could be an affiliate for that. You could also then turn on, um, you know, ad thrive or media vine and start getting some ad rev coming in, right? Like all of those ways, like why not build these other revenue streams coming in versus just selling the, the you know, the Bico jig, which I, I think you should. And then the other thing is, is getting that email list built. So this way here, anytime that you want to talk about, you know, Hey, it's uh, you know, we're approaching July and it's going to be getting hot. Here's five things you need to know when you go out on your next fishing trip so you can have the best chance of catching the largest bass, right? Like that's it. And then you give that tip or those tips or you do, you know, share the video that you did or the blog post, any of that stuff. Okay. So that's it guys. I'm not going to stop preaching about this stuff because this is exactly how you do it. And if you look at any really solid brand, they usually drive a lot of traffic with helpful content. And if you have something like this, this type of market where you can constantly have, you know, the users, you know, in, in this case, the bass fishermen have them create the awareness and the content for you by you highlighting them to me, that's game over. Like that's just game over stuff. All right. So hopefully this helped you guys. I know I went on a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a rant there, I think in a good way. I hope so. Um, but I really, really think that anyone listening and you too, Louie and Bill, uh, is create that content for beginners. Okay. The ones that just are starting, they want to catch bass. And the other one is create content around various jigs and how to use them. And then ask the audience to contribute contribute their best bass fishing tips or something that they did over the weekend and then create monthly contests. I think that's another missed opportunity in this, in this uh, business of yours and anyone else out there that's, that's listening that could possibly tap into something like this. And then from there, emailing at least once per week, but I would definitely, definitely create one video every single week for the next year, 52 videos, make sure that you, you uh, put the, the keywords in YouTube. And then from there, I would also take that blog post or I was, I'm sorry, I would take that video and I would put it into a, a self-dedicated blog post on your website. And then I would write about what is being done inside or what is being said inside of that video. And you can also get that transcribed, have it edited very, very inexpensively. And now you have two pieces of property that are going to be driving awareness and you can then, as you're building that email list, you can let them know, hey, go to the blog. Hey, go to YouTube. And then from there, you're constantly staying in front of the market. All right. So hopefully this helped you guys, uh, Louie and Bill and anyone else that's listening, that you could take this same idea and plug it into just about any business. All right. So um, the episode here is 701. If you would like to download the show notes, the transcripts, and see that big old bass that I caught, head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash 701. And then the episode that I had Louie on, the first episode was 576. I will link that up in the show notes as well. And then the last little reminder, if you want to learn more about how to do this, how to apply this to your business, you're going to want to attend Brand Accelerator Live. This is exactly what we're talking about in various areas, how to take your business and create a brand around it or within it. And then from there, get the attention of your market. So this way here, you can drive sales. You can add additional revenue streams, additional traffic streams and all of that and expand the business outside of what you're doing right now. All right. So brand accelerator live.com. If you're not attending yet, you're going to want to go grab your ticket if they're still available. So go check brandacceleratorlive.com and you'll get all the information and details there. And hopefully you can go grab a ticket and I'll see you in September in Fort Worth, Texas. All right, guys. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you, but you have to, you have to come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud, take action. Have an awesome, amazing day. And I'll see you right back here on the next episode.